Uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Won Sun Shim from Hyundai Motors. Uh, two years ago in London, uh, I made a presentation regarding end-to-end -end connectivity with automotive internet and service-oriented architecture in this conference. At that time, I introduced several modules for end-to-end -end connectivity, which means connectivity from legacy network to IP network, including external network. Today, uh, I would like to talk about more detailed approach for connectivity, especially between in-vehicle and external network based on service-oriented architecture and automotive Ethernet. So, uh, I'm going to introduce the module Service-Oriented Gateway, uh, which has a role in connecting in-vehicle service and cloud service. Especially, I will explain what are the challenges and what is the approach to resolve those challenges. And I will show you structural concept and software architecture of the service-oriented gateway. And then, Seungjun Lee, co-developer from Airplug, will explain specific feature of the approach. Finally, um, I'll show you a simple example to take advantage of the service-oriented gateway. Uh, let me start with concept of service-oriented gateway. This is our overall concept of end-to-end -end service oriented architecture. The basic idea of the concept is that we are going to integrate as many functions as possible on a few high performance computers based on service oriented architecture. Those integrated functions need external data or information as well as legacy data. Especially, it is the best that they can access the external information or legacy network information in the same way as they access services on other ECUs with service-based communication. So, software developer doesn't need to consider the location of service, even which is from the cloud or legacy network. For those features, I introduce SOA adapter and service-oriented gateway. Today, I will focus on service-oriented gateway, which enables in-vehicle or cloud service to access the other one with location transparency. It is a very important module for end-to-end -end service level transparency. So, uh, what are the challenges to connect in-vehicle service and cloud service? First of all, it's not easy to manually handle whole interworking data and service case by case because it gets much larger and larger. We need more flexible solution to connect them. Second, external network has very different characteristics compared to IVN with respect to availability, bandwidth, latency, cost, and even application protocol. Also, we have to care about security when interworking through external networks. Therefore, I introduced service-oriented gateway on in-vehicle issue, which handles issues related with external device network interworking. Furthermore, it can convert application protocols and translate services between in-vehicle and external network. On top of that, we come up with caching information to deal with availability and cost issues from wireless network. Finally, because of security, it can perform service level access control based on policy. Here is the structural concept of service-oriented gateway interworking with cloud function and service in this slide. On the left side, you can see the in-vehicle service in the red box, which are location and vehicle speed. Let's assume that 
cloud has some functionality which uses the location and speed of the vehicle. On the right side, you can see the get location and get speed function. However, those service is actually based on some IP because it was used on internal network. But cloud can access those services via service-oriented gateway. Otherwise, in-vehicle function also want information from cloud such as real-time road condition or weather forecast. It is also possible to get those information through service-oriented gateway. The most significant point is that in-vehicle software does not use external network protocol like MQTT or HTTP but just access the cloud service over some IP. Furthermore, cloud cannot, on, can not only get service on connectivity ECU, which has external network modem, but also access service on any other issues in vehicle. In other words, service-oriented gateway guarantees service level transparency wherever the service is located. Here is the more detailed software architecture of service-oriented gateway. It can bind with MQTT or HTTP for external network as well as some IP for internal network. It could be service provider of cloud service or service consumer to transmit in-vehicle data to cloud. It also includes caching function in order to deal with unstable characteristic of wireless network. Furthermore, it has service access control and it can be controlled based on policy. Also, for more flexible gateway feature, it can easily change mapping information between in-vehicle service and cloud service. Okay, so from the next slide, Seungjun Lee, co-author from Airplug, will take over explanation of specific feature of a service-oriented gateway. Hi, I'm Seungjun Lee, CTO of Airplug. Let me introduce key features of service-oriented gateway. These key features can be easily inferred from the objective of service-oriented gateway. Advantages of service-oriented architecture is obvious. The objective of the service-oriented gateway is to extend the coverage of this service-oriented architecture to cloud in an efficient way. The word efficient can be considered in two aspects. The first aspect is about maximum utilization of existing assets. And the second one is about how to handle different characteristics of external network. Protocol conversion and protocol handling are related with the first aspect. Edge processing, policy and access control, and network utilization are related with the second one. The first function is protocol conversion for service-oriented communication between in-vehicle ECUs, some IP is being used. On the other hand, for communication between vehicle and cloud, protocols from IT world like HTTP or MQTT have been used because we do not want to change either communication framework, conversion between these different application protocols is needed somewhere. Service-oriented gateway performs this protocol conversion function. Basic workflow of the protocol conversion is quite straightforward. Let me briefly explain this for four different cases. The first case is two-way communication, where cloud functionality is provided as a service to in-vehicle ECUs. In this case, service application on a certain ECU 
consumes a service from service oriented gateway, which is originally from cloud functionality. A service consumer make, makes a some IP based method call to service provider, which is the service oriented gateway. Then the service oriented gateway parses and checks this request. And if it is OK, then forwards this request to the corresponding server in the cloud. Here, HTTP over TCP IP is used for application level protocol. SMS might be used for fallback mechanism. If needed, the gateway may reformat the payload, which is argument for the method call. When the HTTP response is received from the server, then the gateway composes the response message and transmits it to the corresponding service consumer application. Here, some IP is used again for this response. The second case is two-way communication again, but with opposite direction. A server in the cloud uses an invicle functionality, which is provided as a service. A cloud server makes a request to the service or gateway. Now, MQTT is used for this vehicle termination communication. When the gateway receives an MQTT message from the server, then the gateway parses the message and finds out that this is a request message. If it is an appropriate request, then the gateway composes a service request and delivers it to the corresponding service provider application. Now, some IP is used for this service request. When some IP response is received from the service provider application, then the gateway composes the response message and delivers it to the server. Now, MQTT is used again here. But here, MQTT topic is different from the one used for request from the server. So the service oriented gateway needs to map between the topics appropriately. Now, here is one way communication case. Information available from in vehicle ECU is delivered to a server in the cloud. The service oriented gateway first needs to find out which application is providing that information and then subscribe to the appropriate event corresponding to that information. This is done using some IPSD protocol, offer and subscribe. When the service provider issues an event, then the, this event is delivered to the serve gateway by a sub-IP protocol, then the gateway performs similar functions as before, parsing, checking, reformatting, and then delivering to the server using HTTP protocol. The last case is opposite to the previous case. Applications on in vehicle ECUs are using cloud information in a service-oriented way. A consumer application is to subscribe events in advance. For this, the service oriented gateway should provide information about the existence and location of the corresponding service using some IP SD offer message. Remaining procedures are almost the same as before, except the direction. So the basic workflow for protocol conversion is very straightforward, but we need to consider some exceptional cases which arise from different characteristics of external connectivity. Here is one example. Occasionally, the external network, such as cellular network, is not stable. This can happen quite often when a vehicle goes through an area where cellular signal is very weak. When the network is unstable, the TCP connection between the vehicle and the cloud server might be also unstable. 
So the service link gateway might need to re-establish the server connection. Even when the connection is still alive, the response from the server might take a very long time. In this case, the gateway might need to check timeout and then return a relevant response to the requesting application so that the application can do an appropriate action. In some case, there might be no available network at all. This can happen when the vehicle is in no signal area or when there is no roaming contracted network. In this case, the gateway might immediately return an error to the application, possibly with late error reason. Service-oriented gateway performs not only protocol conversion, but also controls service discovery functions. From a viewpoint of service-oriented architecture, service-oriented gateway is a service application which provides and consumes services. So the same service discovery technology is used for the gateway as for normal service applications. Some IPSD is used for service discovery protocol and a message format is also the same. But details like operation timing might be different depending on the external network status. For example, even after service oriented gateway is started, it might delay offering its services until the server is connected. Detailed behavior might be also different. For example, when the server connection is disconnected, then the gateway might respond with NAC to subscription request message. Service oriented gateway also provides some edge processing functions like caching and filtering. Caching mechanism for service oriented gateway is almost the same as that in HTTP proxy servers. Caching prevents unnecessary connection to the cloud to external network. So we can improve the response time and also we can reduce the network cost and also the server burden. Filtering can be applied to the data before delivered to cloud servers, either simple subsampling or content-based filtering can be used. With the filtering, we can reduce the amount of delivery data and thus we can reduce the network cost. Aggregation can be also applied to multiple events, either from one service or from multiple services. This also can reduce the communication burden, both for vehicle and cloud. Service Wind Gateway also provides access control functionality. When a certain in-vehicle application attempts to access specific cloud information or functionality, the gateway can allow or deny the access depending on the application and the information. The policy for this access control can be pre-designed or can be dynamically applied. For example, from controller in the cloud, method call and event subscription. Policies can be applied also for other gateway operations like filtering and caching. So far, we briefly looked over main features of service-oriented gateway. Now, let's see some examples. Back to Mr. Sim. Uh, again, this is Wonsen Sim from Hyundai Motors. Finally, uh, I would like to introduce some example in the connected car service which uses service-oriented gateway. This is the case that cloud function controls in-vehicle service dual control with the direction of vehicle termination. SOA gateway consumes dual control service and 
published service via MQTT. So cloud can request door control through SOA gateway. Um, actually, a uh, door control service has existed even in the non-connected car because RF key or switch need to control door. However, we needed some development or change for remote door control from cloud before. But SOA adapter, which connects legacy network with in-vehicle service network, and SOA gateway enables door control to be exposed to cloud as a service without any change. This is the main advantage of the concept. Reversely, this is the case that in-vehicle service notify alarm to cloud with the direction of vehicle origination. In fact, there is already emergency alarm service for equal feature. What if OEM cloud is planning some different way of service from equal center when emergency happens? It should also get alarm from vehicle. However, we don't need to develop those alarm function to transmit OEM cloud. SOA gateway just can connect the existing alarm service to the OEM cloud. Okay, so this is the last presentation. Uh, in summary, SOA can be extended to end-to-end -end from legacy issues to cloud. A service-oriented gateway can be introduced for efficient SOA extension to cloud. It enables in-vehicle software to interact with cloud in a service-oriented way. It efficiently handles external network-related issues like availability, delay, cost, and security by performing protocol conversion, caching, filtering, and access control. Its operation can be dynamically controlled as defined in the policy from cloud. With the SOE adapter and service-oriented gateway, new connected car services can be developed and deployed with least time and effort. Uh, this is the end of presentation. Uh, thank you for listening to my presentation.